Hello, welcome to watch Creative Proteomics video. Today, we are going to briefly introduce the application and methods for peptidomics. During the completion of the human genome, a wide variety of additional omics technologies arose, such as transcriptomics. Peptidomics represents a short version of peptide proteomics. Since the high diversity of peptides in living systems and their involvement in key regulatory processes, there is a need for improved peptide discovery. The peptidomics means the comprehensive visualization and analysis of small polypeptides, thus covering the mass range between proteomics and metabonomics. There is no clear definition to distinguish between peptides and proteins. The most common description is that peptides range from two amino acids to small proteins with a molecular mass of 20 keta. There are large numbers of peptides in human body fluids and have many possible functionalities. Peptidomics can be used for biomarker discovery. The data from a biomarker can be applied to diagnostic implications, molecular and cellular events of the pathology, and new therapeutic approaches. Many peptidomics studies are searching for molecular analytes which correlate with disease states, including C-peptide of proinsulin in diabetes, natriuretic peptides in heart diseases, or amyloid peptides correlated with Alzheimer's. Peptide biomarkers have to fulfill two tasks, including qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis which will allow for the selection of those peptides that are valuable for the desired drug development process. Qualitative analysis means to show which peptides are present in a sample, while quantitative analysis means to discover the concentration. Currently, there are mainly four types of molecules developed for the treatment of human diseases, including small molecules, antibodies, peptides, and proteins. With the developments in several technologies in the areas of peptide synthesis, screening, stability, and modifications, peptides are now recognized as lead molecules for therapeutics. In addition, they have some features that make them ideal drug targets. Important peptide properties are their chemical and biological diversity, high specificity, high affinity and potency, and unique 3D characteristics. They also show no accumulation in organs, usually display a low toxicity at therapeutic doses, and are less immunogenic than antibodies. However, there are some drawbacks. They are low stability in body fluids, and have difficulty in transporting them to target organs. There are more than 67 peptide drugs are currently on the market. Some examples of the therapeutic potential of endogenous peptides include adrenocorticotropic hormone, B amyloid peptides, calcitonin, desmopressin, and so on. The study of endogenous peptides is often compromised by protein fragments produced post mortem during conventional sample handling. Peptides analysis needs preparation and analysis methods that are substantially different from those typically used for proteins. In peptidomics studies, it's important to control proteolysis, not only to avoid peptide degradation, but also mainly to prevent contaminating the peptide sample with proteolytic fragments of larger proteins from the same source. The peptides have some characteristics, including the peptide size and charge state, which complicate the analysis of endogenous peptides. The endogenous peptides range in size from 2 to over 100 amino acids. In addition, the charge state of the endogenous peptides is not nearly as uniform as for triptych peptides. And because of the blocked N terminus and the absence of lysine, some endogenous peptides have no positive charge. However, the goal of most peptidomics studies is to identify all of the abundant peptides, including some peptides with positive charges or large sizes. Because peptides vary in multiple aspects, multiple peptide purification methods can be used sequentially on the same sample. But this strategy has some drawbacks, like limiting the reproducibility of the method, and increasing the sample preparation time. With the development of electrospray ionization, and matrix-assisted laser desorption ionization, mass spectrometry has become an ideal tool for peptide analysis. These soft ionization methods can ionize intact peptide molecules and acceleration into a vacuum without substantial fragmentation. Various mass analyzers have applied to peptidomics, including orbitraps, quadrupole time of flight, and micro time of flight. In addition, tandem mass spectrometry is required for additional information for sequencing. There are some commonly used fragmentation techniques for peptidomics, including collision induced dissociation electron transfer dissociation, and electron capture dissociation. Equipped with high-resolution mass spectrometer, 
The bioanalysts and technicians in creative proteomics can offer professional assistance in your peptidomics research, including characterization of peptide biomarkers and comprehensive peptidomics services. Thanks for watching our video. At Creative Proteomics, we provide the most reliable peptidomics services. If you have any questions or specific requirements, please feel free to contact us. We are very glad to cooperate with you.